bit about vacuum distillation. So if we have a higher boiling compound that we want to purify by distillation, uh, vacuum distillation is a way to go. You can reduce the temperature at which the compound boils by putting it under lower pressure and make it so you don't have to heat it as hot to uh, affect the distillation. So um, I've got here already set up a kind of all-in-one distillation unit. Denser portion where water can flow around it, as well as the actual column portion here. Um, this one has the little fingers, so this would be called a big row column. And you want to use a big row column when you have uh, compounds that are a bit more difficult to separate. So you don't always need to use one. There are other types. Uh, short path can be used for more volatile things. But this is just a, a good example of a, a good unit to use. There's also um, separate pieces where you have a column and then an adapter piece and then a separate condenser. Um, those can also be used for distillations and are probably more frequent, frequently used for them. But this kind of all in one unit is pretty convenient. So, um, one of the key things with distilling is that the, the flask that you attach to, um, to distill from, you want to be as small as possible so that you have very little extra space in the top of your flask because you want the, the vapor of your compound to move over. So if, that, if your distilling flask is too big, it will um, make that process slower. And then what you receive into can be whatever size you need it to be. You just picked another one of the same size. Here's an example of one of those really small short path distillation setups. So you can see here, there's some little fingers. So this has got a bit of a big grow type column to it. And then some more space to cool the thing. And even a small portion that can be a water jacket, your vacuum adapter, and then ports for your flasks to, to distill from and to collect them to. And a space for a thermometer. Space for a thermometer here. Different water ports vacuum just collection distilling from so this is probably the smallest that you can get so to begin our distillation we need to of course set up the vacuum on our schlank line so i've got my trap here and my vacuum pump on and everything's ready to go the next thing we need to do is I've got a receiver attached and everything else is sealed up. This part, you would potentially want a thermometer. I don't have one currently, so I'm just using a stopper. You want that joist, joint greased. Just get a good seal. Anyway, I've got here some impure parole. See, it's a nice brown color. It should be almost colorless, so we need to purify that. So we'll go ahead and attach that. Tech clips are not the best thing to use to attach, so I'm going to actually swing this clamp over and see if I can get it to reach over. set to the lowest pressure that we're going to be using. So we're going to start by turning on the vacuum. We're not going to apply any heat yet. And just here, 
opening the vacuum valve. Open that, and then I have a mark on mine so that I know where to go. As you can see, we're starting to boil off some of our roll already. So depending on the strength of your pump, you may not need to actually apply any heat, or you may need to reduce your vacuum. I believe this is a higher boiling impurity that occurs in the roll, so it won't, um, it won't even collect over here. It'll get caught in the trap. that settle down a little bit here after we get pressure down in the, in the um, system. Okay, and I'll bring us back when we're ready to begin heating. So when doing a vacuum distillation, it's sometimes beneficial to know the temperature that our um, compound is going to boil at, um, at, the, at the pressure that we're gonna be applying. Um, in our apparatus with our vacuum pump. So the one thing we can use is a nomograph. So that's what this is here, these series of three um, scales uh, that we can use to determine the, um, the boiling point that we're going to see in our system. Um, this is just on Sigma Aldrich's website. It's really interesting, very really useful. It's a <clears throat> interactive one and then it gives some instructions on how to use it. So if we're going to find the boiling point under a set vacuum, you can enter the known boiling point and then click the lock button and then select the pressure we're working at. So if we're gonna do parole, parole has a boiling point of 130 C at, at one atmosphere. And then we can see that if we slide the pressure down, so this is actually decreasing the pressure as we go this way, we can see the boiling point. tour, which is more than reasonable for a vacuum pump, we can get uh, our observed boiling point of pearl down to about 44.5 degrees, so let's go a little bit lower on this, let's say 30 tour, yeah, that gets it down to 40 C. So now we could run our oil bath, <clears throat> or even a water bath at that stage at 40 C, uh, if our pump is giving us uh, 30 millimeters of mercury or 30 tour of our pressure um, to, to the stone pearl. So that's how you can use an omograph, and this interactive tool is really easy and yeah, really nice to use. You can also use it to find corrected boiling points at um, atmospheric pressure, but for the purposes of the vacuum distillation, the first set is what we probably want to use. All right, we've now gotten to where our flask isn't bumping very much. It's just kind of boiling a little bit gently here and there. That. So now we can begin to apply some heat. So I've got my oil bath set pretty cool so far, just slightly warming. It will slowly increase the heat. Again, this is where knowing the pressure of your vacuum is, uh, that your vacuum pump can deliver is important so that you can set your hot temperature bath to the, the right place. I know that I need my oil to be about 40 degrees to get a good distillation. So I'll slowly heat my oil to 40 C. I'll put a thermometer in there. Push this up just a little bit. And I'll bring us back when we're going to begin collecting some pearl. So some notes on uh, distilling while we're waiting for this uh, to heat up is um, you can use if you need to separate multiple compounds, you can use what's called a cow adapter. So this is one type where you've got multiple little um, kind of collection tubes all attached to one thing. And you can attach that and then if you have it at the right angle, you can rotate it as you go and collect into the different spots. So you can collect separate fractions as you go. There's also this kind of other type which actually has the vacuum adapter here as well so that you can put um, other flasks on here and rotate it as you go to collect into different flasks. Um, so sometimes it's just easier, especially if your compound isn't air sensitive to just refill with air or with nitrogen. Um, 
remove and then just swap receiving flasks here. So just have extra ones set out. If you have uh, air sensitive compounds, you can distill from plank flasks. You just have to put them here as well as here and then have lines attached to them. And then with swapping them, you just want to open them and push nitrogen through them so that when you remove them, you can immediately cap them uh, so that you're to protect your compound with the inner gas that's flowing through the flask as it's removed. You might actually have to put nitrogen in from both sides, like you know, on this case. So you'd have a nitrogen tube in a tube in here, push nitrogen up through, as well as to put nitrogen into the dish link on this side, so then you can have that purging out this way so you don't get gas going back that way to damage what's in here. So it can be a bit tricky and more um, kind of a pain to deal with, but it is possible to do uh, distillations like that with uh, more sensitive compounds. Additionally, you can distill really small volumes. There are smaller apparatus that you can use that have smaller, that are overall smaller columns, smaller condenser portion if they even have one. So you can even distill volumes as small as one milliliter or half a milliliter, but it's easier to distill larger volumes. Of course, uh, it just gets really difficult when you get to really small volumes like that. Anyway, we'll keep uh, moving along here with this distillation. So it's been a little while, maybe an hour. Um, heating has been kind of slow and you can see the vapor front now is starting to get to the top of the condenser. And we're going to start condensing. We've got a little bit of pearl vapor condensing there. A little bit has actually come over already. So the distillation has actually begun at this point as far as the collection of our um, desired portion of it. Um, the, the part down here will get much darker as it goes on. It will be left with a small volume of really dark impurity um, that we'll leave behind. And we should have a reasonably clean, um, kind of pale yellow to almost clear uh, pearl here in our collector from collection flask. And we're done. So I imagine this will take another, possibly an hour, probably a little bit less. But once we get going, it shouldn't be too bad. But I don't need to adjust the heat anymore. I know that this vacuum pump does something about, um, in the current setup, I should be getting about 70 torr is the pressure in there. And with the nomograph I showed earlier, that means I need to have the temperature at about 57 degrees C. So the oil bath is a bit hotter than that, but of course we need it to be a bit hotter than that to drive it um, out. So uh, at this point we should be in collecting rather nicely. And I'll bring us back when we're done with the distillation. So, our distillation has reached the end. We're pretty well gone down there, and our temperature's kind of shot up a little bit. We've got a pretty good amount collected over here. This is just for demonstration purposes, so we're not really worried about how much we're getting over here. It's cleaner than it was. Um, anyway, uh, so to take this down, what we want to do is turn off our vacuum. And then we want to slowly refill our apparatus with nitrogen. We're just going to refill the nitrogen through this side. This is the only thing that part that's connected to our Schlenk line anyway. If we were had a Schlenk flask here, we'd probably want to refill through that and then we could pull it down and cap it quickly. After the apparatus is cool, take it down and clean it. And that's how we would do it back in distillation.